Hello everybody. This is part 4 of my build mode tutorial series. Today, we are going to be making an asset system. This will allow you to place more than just blocks. This video might be shorter than others, but without further ado, let's do it. First, start by adding a folder into replicated storage. Name it assets. Then, add an object value into our values folder. Name it asset. We could get rid of the placing block and rename the placed block. Then, we put that placed block into our assets folder. Last, set the asset object values value to the block we just created. Now, let's adjust our scripts to fit this new system. We can do this by replacing, placing, with the asset value in replicated storage as well as making the cloned block transparent. Let's set a variable for this object value for accessibility reasons. Now let's also adjust the build handler script. We're going to add another argument to the place block event, the selected asset by the player. This way, we can replace repstore.placed with asset. Let's make sure to pass on that argument on the client side. We should also adjust the create placing function while we're here. Now, let's make sure that our game still works with these new changes. Ah uh oh. The placing block is still collidable. That's a very easy fix though. Let's make sure to turn the can collide property off in the create placing function. Perfect. It works now. Now let's actually create different assets. We could start with the UI. Let's duplicate the material scrolling frame and rename it to assets. Let's work with the material sample frame for now, since the asset frame will look pretty similar, with the viewport frame and text. Let's customize it by setting its text to its name and making the block visible in the viewport frame. Once you're finished customizing it to your liking, make sure to name the frame to whatever you want the asset to be called. Now, add a tag to the button and name it, Asset Button. This will be how we can retrieve all of the buttons and detect when they are clicked. When they are clicked, the asset will change. Now, I'm going to duplicate it and create a ball asset. To accomplish this, I will duplicate our frame, rename it to, Ball, set the text to, Ball, and make the part in the viewport frame a ball. They don't actually do anything yet, so let's script that now. Open up build local and create a for loop that loops through every instance that is tagged asset button. Let's create a function that runs whenever an asset button is clicked. This will be very simple, we're just going to set that asset object values value to the corresponding asset with the button. We can find the corresponding asset by finding the child of the assets folder that has the same name as the frame. Let's create a function to run whenever the object value is changed. We will do this in the block placer script. This function will basically just remove the old asset being placed and replace it with the new asset. Because of this, we could start with a condition that makes sure the tool is 1, because otherwise, there's no point in executing this code. Let's delete the old part and set it to nil, then call create placing. As you can see, the new asset doesn't appear because we didn't create that asset. Let's quickly create the ball asset and put it into our assets folder in replicated storage. Now it doesn't completely just get deleted, but we didn't design the asset so it's still a block. Okay, now it should work. Perfect. There's one more thing we need to fix though. When you change the color while there is a part being placed, the part being placed doesn't change color. This is because we didn't fully adjust our code. If you remember from last video, when a color or material button is pressed, the script checks to see if a part in workspace is called placing. If so, then it would be colored. With our new adjustments however, the parts are named based on their asset, not placing. On block placer, let's set the parts name to placing. That was a very easy fix. Perfect. As you can see, it now works. That's it for today, but because assets can vary based on how you want them to be, I'm going to end this video with one recap on how to add a new asset. Let's make a cylinder block. The first step is to design it in workspace. Now, make sure to name it whatever the asset will be called. For example, I'm going to name it, Cylinder. Then, drag it into the, Assets, folder. Last, but not least, create a frame in the UI and change both the viewport frame part, the text, and the name. And that's it. We're finished for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you feel like you have benefited from this video, it would help me a lot if you subscribed. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.